It might look like everyone knows how to start maize farming in Ghana. Okay, but don't fall into that trap. Did you know that Ghana has the worst yield of maize in the whole world? Not too pleasant to accept, but that is the fact. Ghana has an average yield of 1.7 metric tons per hectare, compared to other countries on this same continent, getting about 6 to 7 metric tons per hectare. Amidst of that though, it's actually possible to become rich with maize farming business in Ghana, if you do things right. People in Ghana following these techniques are making over 22,000 Ghana cities of consistent profit from their two-acre maize farm, and I will teach you how to start yours today and get similar yields also. Do you know why right now is the best time to start maize farming? Well, field experiments were conducted to determine the optimum time for planting maize in the various ecological zones and seasons of Ghana in order to achieve the best yields. It turns out mid-March and mid-April planting give the best yield. Guys, the best time is almost passing and that is why I am making this video right now. In Ghana, maize is cultivated during two main growing seasons, from January to May and from June to late September. It is found that every September, October and February, March, demand for maize goes extremely high and that is when farmers can potentially make huge money out of their maize farm. This is obvious because during these periods, maize is not grown due to the climate. And at the end of this video, I will show you how to use this to your advantage and double your revenue from your maize farm. So now that you know this is the best time to start let's go ahead and talk about the best practices on how to start your maize farm and get the most out of it step by step for the marketing aspects i will share my top four secrets in selling my maize with ease and get the optimum prices at the end of this video so smash that subscribe button and let's dive in first step in maize farming in general is to acquire the best piece of land for your maize cultivation how large the size of land should be depends on you but i recommend getting a large piece of land if you really mean business however if you only have a small piece of land it shouldn't stop you from doing something preferably get a deep fine structured well aerated well-drained loamy soil type of land that are rich in organic matter. This is proven to give the highest yield from maize plantations. Okay, choosing the land isn't difficult at all. Once you have settled on the land, it's time to start preparing the land for cultivation. One mistake people keep doing in their farms is they jump straight to planting whatever they want to plant without preparing the soil first. The well-being of your crops largely depends on the conditions under which they are cultivated. Taking one to two weeks to prepare the soil before planting will go a long way to improve the yield and health of your crops. But how do you actually prepare the soil? It is actually simple. Remember I mentioned the recommended soil requirement for maize earlier. A deep, fine structured, well aerated, well drained loamy soil. By soil preparation, this is what you want to achieve. Start by tilling or plowing the soil. This makes the soil loose and become fine structured, well aerated and well drained. This ensures better growth and development of the seed into a mature plant. If it is not raining often during the time of cultivation, you should probably consider irrigating the soil for about one to two weeks before sowing the seeds. Remember, regardless of the soil type and the land you secure for your business, it should go through these same preparation stages. Once this is done, you should go ahead and choose your preferred type of seed. There are two main types of seeds that are grown in Ghana. The hybrid or the yellow corn and the local seed or OPV. Now, if you mean business, then I recommend the hybrid seeds mainly because it has proven to give the highest yield in Ghana and it is drought resistant also, which means that it can still thrive in the midst of our weird and unpredicted weather. The hybrid costs around 300 to 500 cities per acre, depending on where you find yourself within the country. If you are going with a hybrid seed though, you should never recycle the seeds and new seeds should be obtained each year. The reason is that these seeds are manufactured such that after you cultivate and harvest you can't grow the seeds again if you do it's either the seeds will rot in the soil or will germinate but cannot grow well you need to buy new seeds every year and once your seeds are ready and your land is prepared let's go ahead and learn how to sow the seeds in order to get the best yield plant your seeds at a depth of about 1.5 to 2 inches in the soil now optimal density varies but it is generally recommended to plant 18,000 to 30,000 plants per acre depending on the specific maize variety maize is a warm season crop 
Plant seeds when the soil temperature reaches at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit for proper germination. The best temperature for germination is 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. Population of maize plants on a piece of land is also an important determiner of the plant health. Adequate road spacing is essential for proper air circulation and sunlight exposure. The recommended spacing is typically between 30 to 40 inches. Now let's talk about one of the most essential aspects of maize farming that you should probably know if you want to make a difference you can't succeed in maize farming business today if you don't know about effective weed and pest control techniques the fall army worm is your greatest enemy in maize farming business this pest can cause you a loss of more than 50 percent in your business from studies the estimated mean national yield loss due to fall army worm in ghana was over 470,000 tons in 2018 with a monetary value of over 1.7 million US dollars. Fall army worm is a polyphagous and highly mobile migratory insect pest, which was first detected in West Africa in early 2016. Since its introduction, this insect has significantly impacted livelihoods of small-scale farmers across the continent and in Ghana in particular. You can actually plant like 10 acres of land in Ghana and get just half of it at the end because of these devils. It is possible to control them but expensive. Here's how you do it. After four weeks of germination, start visiting your farm frequently and look for signs of infestation. This ensures that you detect it early as it is key in preventing excessive loss. Once you see few plants infested, there are three classes of pesticides that are proven to be very effective against fall armyworm. The first group is the spinocytes. This class of insecticide work by disrupting the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors of the insect's nervous system. This mechanism of action makes this class of insecticide very selective in destroying the target insect and leaving the beneficial predators. This is very helpful as it doesn't kill all the microorganisms in the soil as part of the target insect. Spinocytes does not destroy only mature insects, but also their larva and eggs. Some examples of spinocyte insecticides are and trust and success new. We also have the emamectin benzoate. It works by penetrating the leaf tissues and forming reservoir within treated leaves, which provide residual activity against pests that ingest the plant substance when feeding. Examples of emamectin benzoate you can use to control fall armyworm are affirm and proclaim. The last class of insecticide I personally find effective against fall armyworm is the Chlorantronilipro group. Chlorantronilipro binds to a specific receptor in the muscles called the Ryanodine receptor. When the chemical binds to this receptor, it causes muscle cells to leak calcium. The muscles stop working normally, the insect is paralyzed and dies. Some examples of this group are Autacor and Couragen. Once you have your insecticide figured out, spray your farm at least once in three weeks depending on the particular insecticide you get. This is essential because fall armyworm is very persistent and migrates so quickly from farm to farm. For instance, if you treat your farm and there is a nearby farm that is infested to well expect to see your farm infested again as soon as the chemical loses its power. This is why you need to keep treating the farm until the plants start to silk. At this stage, if your farm isn't heavily infested already, the plants will be healthy until you harvest, even without additional treatments. Maize takes about 12 to 16 weeks to reach maturity, as you may need to spray the farm at least three times in three weeks interval, depending on how persistent your farm gets infested. Note that I am unable to recommend any dosage of the chemical since I do not know what specific agrochemical you get. I advise that you use it as prescribed by the chemist at the shop you buy it. Now with weed control, if your farm can be weeded manually, it is perfect as you would not need to worry about the effect of herbicides on your farm. However, if that's not possible depending on the size of your farm, you may still have options like post-emergence herbicides. The last thing you would want to do is to sow your seeds, let it germinate and ignore it to stay in the bushes. Maize hate weeds as it suppresses its growth and health. Weeds in your farm will also bring in several pests to make sure that your hard work is room. So weigh your options. 
if labor cost for weeding will be too much in your situation. Consider using a pre-emergence herbicide on the piece of land before sowing your seeds to prevent germinated weed seedlings from becoming established. Also consider using post-emergence herbicides to control weed in your farm after they have already emerged from the soil. There are post-emergence herbicides specifically made for maize and other narrow-leaved crops designed to target and destroy both grasses and broadleaf weeds, leaving all narrow-leaved plants healthy. Some examples of these herbicides are Nico Gold, Amine Spray, and Mason. Now, if you have followed up till now and going to implement what you've learned so far, I am confident that you are 80% more likely to succeed in this business. The last step I will talk about before diving into the business aspect is fertilization. As more and more plants and crops or even weeds grow on a piece of land, the soil gradually loses its nutrients. For example, for every ton of whole plant corn harvest, we remove from the soil about 25 kilograms of nitrogen, 5 kilograms of phosphorus, and 20 kilograms of potassium. That means if you want to regrow maize or anything on that land, the coming years. You would need to replace these lost nutrients in order to have a satisfactory corn yield for the years to come. As a rule of thumb, you may need to supplement about 100 kilograms of nitrogen, 280 kilograms of phosphorus, and 100 kilograms of potassium per hectare in order to achieve this. However, it's very important to understand which nutrient is necessary for the plant growth and at which stage. Otherwise, if you apply a nutrient at the wrong time, you may harm your crop instead. The two main fertilization strategies you may want to consider for your maize farm are the basal fertilization and foliar fertilization. Basal application fertilizers are applied near the base of the sown seed usually one day before or after sowing. For maize, the most important nutrient necessary at this early stage is phosphorus. Therefore, you may need to apply fertilizers with large amount of phosphorus and a little of both nitrogen and potash. Get for example a fertilizer with NPK value of 535 and vary about 5 to 10 grams of this fertilizer, 2 inches below and 2 inches beside each hole containing 2 seeds. After this, the next fertilization will be at the stem elongation stage. This stage begins about 5 to 6 weeks after germination. This corn growth stage can predict the number of grains that will develop in each given crop row. At this stage of the plant's growth, corn needs the most nitrogen along with plenty of water and other nutrients. It is therefore important to this time apply a fertilizer with a higher nitrogen content. For example, one with an NPK value of 35.5. Now, note that this is not the only way to go about it. You may have other ways you have done this and would love to know about it in the comment section. What I have taught you so far has proven to be effective and has been replicated by many farmers across the country. I am confident it will give you same results if you follow it carefully. Now, the sales or the marketing aspect. The first question to ask is how is maize used in Ghana? Research says that Ghana's maize production mainly goes into livestock feed and household consumption. With this in mind, here are the four most effective ways to sell your maize with ease. But before that, if you have gained value in this video so far, would you please help me by subscribing to the channel right now? Okay, thank you for doing that. Number one is food processes. Have you thought about the fact that almost every chop bar and restaurant across all the regions in Ghana procure some amount of maize for their daily operations? The only thing it takes to start working with these business entities is reaching an agreed price that works for both of you. If you are able to reach a better deal with them, they will definitely turn their backs on all previous suppliers and start working with you. This doesn't necessarily mean settling for low prices. However, compromising a little in your price and getting a huge amount of sales will still bring that cash you want in your pocket. The second way to sell your maize in Ghana is through local markets. Local markets and retail shops are another great way to get your maize into the market. These are the places people tend to when they need home staff and food staff urgently. That is a good opportunity to showcase your produce to a lot of people who can potentially be customers. That is as simple as that. The third one though is livestock feed mills. As I mentioned earlier, livestock feed is one major area the Ghanaian maize go into. You should start by researching your area or even other localities you can transport your maize to for livestock feed mills and poultry feed mills. There are several of them in Kumasi such as Asvi Agro Limited, Boris Farm Supplies, Premier Poultry and more. 
A lot also in Accra, such as Aquaba Feeds Limited, Delawin Farms Limited, Amas Farms Limited, and more. These mills are looking for best deals that will promote their businesses also. Go to them and reach an agreement with them and start supplying them your maize. The last one, and definitely not the least, is exploring farming contract arrangements. This is where you enter into agreement with buyers to supply a specific quantity of maize at a predetermined price regardless of the season. Price fluctuations in the maize industry is a real problem. During the rainy season, when maize is grown a lot, the price of maize comes down. And during the dry season, when it is not grown a lot in the country, the prices are so high. This is a problem for the companies using maize for their productions, as they may need to also fluctuate their prices from season to season. Again, remember every problem is an opportunity. Tap into this opportunity by reaching a standard price and quantity you are willing to supply them all the time regardless of the season and almost every company will be willing to work with you. But if you can do all of these effectively, it boils down to one thing, effective planning. Watch this video on how to write and execute a business plan for your farm, step by step.